How can educators and parents build self-confidence in their children? I'm going to be showing you right now how you can build your children's self-confidence. But before I start, hit the subscribe button down there and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for subscribing. And also click the notification bell so you know when next I'll post a new video. Self-confidence is a complex stress to measure and to impart. Some children exhibit self-confidence from the very first day of school. Why others is a skill that must be fostered and actively encouraged. So this tax falls largely on the classroom educators and also on parents. <music> Chica, the founder of the Blossom Kids Build. I'm a teacher, I'm a trainer, I'm bringing you insights to issues in creative education and parenting. I'm extremely passionate about children, parenting, school system, training institute, and educational threats. I aspire to make education better and more enjoyable for all children, regardless of their background and their circumstances by supporting the parents and also the educators that are engaged with their learning and also in their development. And I also enable thousands of um, educators and parents to embed creative approaches to teaching and learning that help young children to achieve their outstanding results across the whole curriculum and also for them to fulfill their incredible potential. The four different techniques a teacher can use to foster self-confidence in their students. Number one is focus on a child's strength. Just like adults, children have their own individual strengths and areas for development. By recognizing a student's strength, their teacher can build upon them Let's say, for example, there are some children who possess um, strong social skills. Those children may soar as part of a group. Yes, but on the other hand, there are some other children who are always reluctant and uncertain. They feel most comfortable working alone or with one trusted peer. So it is led for the teacher to focus on the strengths of their child. Along us also is by encouraging the strength. When you encourage the strength, it comes uh, by the responsibility of knowing each side preferred learning style. So for example, some students are kinesthetic learners, meaning that they learn best when physically doing things. So educators, please, you have to foster this learning style by allowing the student to build, to build or to work with manipulative and materials. So if you have not yet watched my previous video on learning styles, I'll be posting the link here or there. You can just click on it and I'll post also the link on the notification of, the, of my this thing. So you can go there and click on that. So Another student may also enjoy maybe paper crafts or thereby or, or maybe using them um, trying to make kites or using um, scissors or glue to cut out an attractive work. So it is the teacher's responsibility to, to familiarize themselves with the individual strength and learning styles and also preference of each student in, in their classroom. So teachers we need to encourage the children to begin with the familiar task before taking on a significant changing or challenging ones as well. Number two is for you to set attainable goals. Achieving goals can play a huge role in building students' self-confidence. So educators, you need to set goals that are challenging but also realistic. Um, it makes um, the children to reach those goals. So once you find out that they can achieve the goal, 
that have been set for them, they are more encouraged to continue. As a result, they not only develop their confidence in their own skill and ability, they also develop a love for learning. So um, this inspires them to keep moving forward and also to keep exploring and also asking more questions and also achieving their aims. So goals in the classroom are student-centered. It should be student-centered so that the, it is always important to for, for learning and also important that students may want to for you to know that students may want to achieve their goals because they know if they know they can it also help them to build their confidence and when a goal has been attained the next step is for you to involve reward so number three is for you to reward efforts and improvements get us please let's believe every step of learning is a cause for celebration by recognizing students for attaining goals making an effort to improve and showing a positive attitude and a willingness to learn we are reinforcing a child's value so students understand that progress matters no matter how small so and teachers should also make every effort to praise students in front of their peers so the entire classroom can also share in the positivity and this reward um, effort and improvement can foster the child's self-confidence so learn. number four is for you to foster an inclusive environment so it is it, it feels good to belong even as an adult it feels good for you to belong so when children feels as though they are part of something bigger whether it is a team or a classroom or a global society they feel confident so uh, for those reason educators are to be very very careful to include every student equally each student they has um, a, 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 a choice and also a responsibility so whether it is a writer or material manager or an artist or a timekeeper everyone has an important role to play this helps students to learn to believe in themselves and in their talent as well so it is important that um, teachers should do what to contribute in this matter and also integrate uh, roles to them individual um, children because they all it builds their confidence if you foster an inclusive environment in your classroom so i i believe these four techniques can be used by educators and parents to foster self-confidence in their children whether in the classroom or at home it, it reflects in student learning at home so as children take risk as they achieve goals and receive recognitions they are encouraged they are encouraged to keep moving forward slowly but surely they become champion of their own learning so by setting ever more difficult goals students begin they begin to take setbacks in their stride and they demonstrate resilience so where they maybe once have flattered or become disheartened they now stand up to do what to take up the challenge and they dust off and keep on going so they become risk takers open to exploration and exper um, experimentation they communicate more 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 confidently and both with their peers and also with their parents and with their teachers so without having no trouble sharing ideas and opinions with their peers so these are the things this four techniques will help you achieve in your children it will help you achieve their self-confidence so i believe this video has been of help to you please share it to your friends and give it a thumbs up don't forget to like and also to subscribe Thank you, I'll see you in my next video.